Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining. So today we're just going to talk a little bit about the future of Dynamics GP and why you should consider Acumatica. <laughs> so the agenda for today, I'm just going to go through um, a little bit about NextSec Group, then, um, you know, why convert from GP to Acumatica, some of the options um, for deploying Acumatica, and then um, uh, converting as well as uh, resources and time needed. And then there's a promo that's in the offering right now as well. So I think most of you are next set customers that are on, but just to kind of give you a little bit of an update here. So we have been around since 1994. So over 25 years um, in the ERP, CRM and BI space. <clears throat> and we have over 600 customers and that would be on our Acumatica, Microsoft, and Sage, and Salesforce practices. We have about 95% annual client retention rate, and we are uh, support customers within uh, the 50 United States as well as 12 countries. We also are uh, kind of divided up in different industries as well. Um, some of those would be uh, distribution, field services, manufacturing, um, food, uh, and chemicals, and then uh, medical device, to name a few. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Dynamics GP and where we are right now. So um, recently, or I should say in April, um, I think most people remember April of this year, but uh, GP 2015 mainstream support expired. So uh, GP 2013 started the perpetual licensing um, and so that has come around now to that version um, being expired for Microsoft mainstream support. Of course, Next Tech will always support you on whatever version you may be on. And then 2016's R1 release that came out in April of 2016, that support is coming up, I believe, either February or April. Um, mainstream Microsoft support is expiring on that as well. And so, as you can see, as we're going through here um, on the different releases, uh, that that support is now getting to be that time of when that mainstream support is happening. And so, the last release before this one here in October was uh, October of 2018. And then Microsoft just released, it's more of a cumulative update, I would say, for the uh, 2018 R3 here last month. Um, and then going forward, future enhancements, it's not gonna really be full blown upgrades like you may be used to, where it takes a bunch more hours and a bunch of hops. And if you're on the latest version of 2018, let's say R2, then it's gonna be more cumulative updates. So no big feature function releases. Um, it's gonna be more just you know things that come out that, um, you know, some features um, and requested things from the customer and community, but no big, you know, module changes or table changes or that kind of thing. And so here's a little bit of a roadmap that just shows from 2016 up till now um, and the things um, that are coming out. You'll notice in 2018 R2 here that there were definitely um, a lot more optimizations and feature functions that were added. So going forward, um, it's going to be more cumulative updates, not saying things won't be added, but it's going to be, um, uh, you know, a little bit less on the feature function side and more on the uh, technical side. Um, so that's through here. Get this to work. So I'm going to talk a little bit about um, Acumatica uh, Cloud ERP, ERP. So an introduction to Acumatica is that it is a full-blown born in the cloud solution, uh, cloud and mobile. And um, so it wasn't an on-premise solution like GP that you just host um, that didn't have, um, you know, the, the solution wasn't developed for the cloud. It actually was born in the cloud. And it was originally created by the people that wrote and um, created Dynamics SL. So ERP is in their DNA. And it's definitely a specialized solution for mid-sized customers. And they are business application experts as well. Uh, a big trend, especially with COVID and work from home has been um, cloud solutions and the cloud disruption, if you will, 
where uh, everybody is looking to be able to access their solutions from home or remotely uh, to be able to continue to operate their businesses. And so there's been a big shift. And I would say just from our experience in this last six months, everybody is looking to either host or at least exploring it and moving to the cloud to be able to get to their, their business applications. And along with that, the third parties that go with those business applications are having to answer that as well. And so they're also offering um, you know, SaaS pricing or a SaaS solution to be able to complement that. <laughs> and Acumatica, their focus is mainly on the solution and developing and maintaining the product. So they rely 100% on the partner channels, such as Next Tech, uh, to be able to support the customers and implement the solution. Acumatica does not sell direct. So that's a big, um, a big thing for us. And you're able to choose your local service provider to, um, you know, to who you want to support you in that. Acumatica is also an open architect architecture and uh, rapid integration. And some of the pre-built solutions they have, such as Magento, Smartsheet, um, Office 365, um, Shopify, which is not on here, and then of course AWS and Azure. Those are pre-built um, and are available. Um, and you can actually go explore the Acumatica marketplace um, to see what's out there. Because it is born in the cloud, um, Acumatica, you can access from anywhere on any device, whether that be a desktop, laptop, or a mobile device. And what I really like about it, just from my own personal experience, is I went and checked it out. It's the same user interface. So you're not having to figure out, well, what does it look like on this device? Or what does it look like on that device? It's the same. It may be smaller, but as you can see here, there's a dashboard. And even on the mobile device, it's the same dashboard. So um, uh, that's definitely an advantage. You also get three deployment options. So it is a true cloud solution. Um, Acumatica works with AWS to deploy their SaaS offering, so into the public cloud. But you also get the option of deploying into a private cloud, so one that you use or want to continue to use um, for either hosting or the cloud provider that you're um, familiar and comfortable with. You also have the option to take it on premise. So you can keep it in your office on your own servers and databases um, or use a colo or data center. So Acumatica is definitely a little different than the current GP um, licensing model. So GP is a user-based solution where you, you know, purchase your users for, I think believe they're concurrent users for everybody to get in and they're kind of assigned to people um, <clears throat> that would access the system. Acumatica is different in that it is a transactional-based solution. So you don't have to worry about running up against your user numbers if somebody needs to get in and somebody doesn't have to log out. Um, you can have give access to anybody, um, you know, whether that be internal, but also you can extend that access to you know, key customers or partners, even auditors that come in. You don't have to worry about you know, what license, what user license that they're going to, uh, to use. And then it also helps improve any kind of bottlenecks of information or reporting because you're not having to, uh, to decide who's gonna be able to get in and take a peek. You can just, you know, go ahead and log in. And another big factor it would be the scalability of the solution, especially if you're a seasonal business. Um, if you're you know, time of the if you're a seasonal business and you are the busiest and everything scales up, um, whatever it may be from I don't know Christmas time or the last you know fall and winter. And then in spring and summer, you're uh, is not as busy. You can easily adjust. Um, your licensing or the licensing for Acumatica based on the transactions and based on your seasonal business. So data ownership, it's your data. It's always your data, it's secure, and you always have access to that data. So the core products of Acumatica are financial management, it's got project accounting, inventory management, and customer management. And then the way Acumatica um, builds upon that is with industry additions. And so within those industry additions, um, as you can see down here, there's field service, 
commerce and retail, construction, distribution, manufacturing. And within those additions, it's all very geared towards that industry. And so you're not getting a bunch of modules that you're not going to use um, that are just kind of sitting there. It's definitely, you know, once you get your requirements defined, it's like it's very specific to the industry that you're in or the multiple industries that you're in as well. Acumatica offers free training, and this is something you can go check out now if you would like to kind of get an idea. So you can go to Open Uni, it's down here at the bottom, openuni.acumatica.com, uh, check it out and, and see what they offer. It's also in compliance with SOC types one and two, as well as PCI, DC, DSS level one, and then all of the ISVs um, that Acumatica or in Acumatica's marketplace must be certified with Acumatica and keep up with the latest versions. And that's over 150, probably more than that um, now, but about 150 plus ISVs or third parties. Acumatica has also been named recently best cloud ERP solution, best manufacturing solution, and best ERP software by the Cody Awards and PC Magazine's Editor Choice. And this year alone, Acumatica um, has also been ranked highest in customer satisfaction and usability by Gartner, Nucleus Research, and G2 Crowd. So I did that pretty quick, but we will be sending this out. Uh, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask um, on here. And then I'm gonna hand this over to Lawrence. Um, so great. So, that, um, so today the goal is for me to take you through a little bit of uh, an overview of Acumatica's functionality. We're gonna start by looking at some navigation and look and feel components in Acumatica. We'll, we'll drill down into some components that we really think set Acumatica apart as a true cloud application. Um, and I'll be doing some comparisons. Uh, you know, I've been in uh, the ERP space since the mid 90s. And so I've seen the evolution of Windows based accounting software uh, you know, like Dynamic CP and the evolution of the, the types of functionality that com comes to bear in the cloud world in products like Acumatic. So we'll do be doing a little bit of comparison there. Um, we'll look at some dashboards. We'll do some uh, workflow type examples. Maybe we'll do an AP workflow, look at approvals, look at emails and attachments and how, how that all works together in one nice workflow maybe an order to cash example. And then we'll spend some time just briefly summarizing the various additions that Acumatica offers from a field service, whether we're talking field service or manufacturing or construction. All righty, so that's enough PowerPoint for now. Um, let's see in that, and we're gonna jump right into Acumatica. So um, as you've heard, Acumatica is a full cloud-based ERP. Really all I need to access Acumatica is a data connection and a device. Right, and so that data connection can be my cellular connection on my phone. That could be, you know, Wi-Fi in my home, or it could be, you know, the, connected to a LAN in my office. Um, probably could shouldn't be dial-up, but I guess it could be. Um, and then from a device perspective, we could be running Acumatic on a tablet. We could be running it on our mobile phones. We could be running it on um, on a laptop. And so today, I'm actually running Acumatica on a um, on a Windows laptop, but I could also be running it on a Mac. Um, I'm going to go ahead and log in as the administrative user, and we'll start talking about some of the UI user interface components that we will see in Acumatica. Um, so when I log into Acumatica, really the first thing that I'm going to be pre presented with is uh, my home page, and that, that home page is going to be rendered in the form of a dashboard. And on that dashboard, we're going to have various components to drive the, the activity and the attention of the user to the things that are important and the things that they need to know in their daily operation. And so um, you'll notice that if I jump into my dashboard menu, we've actually got dashboards that are crafted around the, all of the various departments and organizations and functions that are in the business. Um, when we implement Acumatica for our clients, we will actually go through, um, as we go through the business process uh, uh, definition stage of the, of the project and understanding what you do, we'll help you craft these dashboards to be very specific to the roles and functions in your business. Um, such that, you know, when, when I'm implementing Acumatic, it's really my goal that users will have 70 to 80% of what they need to do, things they need to look at, things they need to take action on, presented to them in the form of their homepage or their dashboard. Okay, so these really become the place where folks live in Acumatica. And there'll be a number of different types of components that we'll see on these. We'll see these data widgets, and these data widgets really deliver um, real-time information that are relevant for that particular role. So the particular role I'm in now, person who's, who might be 
um, managing calls coming in from customers uh, or, or, or also uh, responsible for support calls and or uh, you know, following up on late payments for customers. Um, I, I've got components that let me drill down on that information extremely quickly. Um, the way these work is um, when I see something that requires attention, a lot of times we'll call attention to that by putting it in red. So we'll have conditional formatting here that takes uh, the attention of the user right to the things that require attention. Two late orders, I want to see what those are. I can drill right into those. And then I'm going to be presented with that list of late orders that require attention. Um, as you might uh, imagine, anything in Acumatica that looks like a hyperlink, it's going to look and function just like any other website that you might have ever seen. Uh, so if something looks like a hyperlink, it's a hyperlink, which means I can drill right into it and that'll take me right to the sales order in question. Okay, so that's kind of the metaphor that we would be looking at across Acumatica. It's gonna be the same kind of operation, uh, regardless of if we're looking at a data tab, or in this case, you know, pictures worth a, chart, a thousand words. Um, we will sometimes represent data in charting format. So, you know, this is a nice trending report uh, using bar graphs to kind of show trends of a particular sales component over time, or pie charts so we can get a, a sense for the gravity of the things that are uh, ticking up uh, from a purchasing perspective, the most spend. Um, so that's another way, another way you might represent information uh, on the homepage. And then finally, we might use a table view or workbench. And those become very relevant for, um, for functions where I need to kind of work through a process. Um, so as I mentioned, we'll craft these to be specific to the to various uh, departments. Um, and these are just a couple of examples, whether I'm a construction project, uh, project manager, where I'm looking at uh, things that are on my desk to approve, issues that are on my court to resolve, um, change logs and so forth. Um, the other type of component that we can put on uh, a dashboard is really any type of um, URL, anything that can be retrieved from the web can be uh, created as a web part on the dashboard. So in this case, if I'm a construction, construction manager managing projects in a particular geographic area, it's very important for me to keep up with the weather. I can put that weather uh, status right there on my dashboard. So I know when I start getting all those calls from the crews telling me they can't uh, show up at this site because you know there's two inches of rain, um, I can validate that, right? All right. So um, along with that, then just from a look and feel perspective, we, we, you know, we would have a classical menuing structure, and that's what you'll see up on the left here. So based on the various modules that we offer in Acumatica, you're going to see a workspace that, um, and they're all pretty much going to look like this. When I open a workspace, whether it's for GL or for payables, I'm going to have tiles across the top that take me to the frequently used screens and reports, and then all of the various menu items are going to um, reside below that group based on the type of uh, um, screen or report that it is. And then we will typically, uh, what, what Acumatic will do is it'll have the most frequently used menu item show first, but if you needed to see every particular item, you could, you could uh, clearly do that as well. Okay. Um, when I jump into a particular uh, screen, and we'll just to do that, we'll just kind of jump into an AP bill screen um, just to kind of start, just to complete the look and feel uh, approach uh, discussion. Um, we actually uh, will, huh, we'll, maybe we'll open up, there it is. So this is a, a typical data entry screen in Acumatic. Like I'll just load up a document here um, just so we can have something to kind of uh, take a look at. Um, very uh, familiar header tab interface for the detail, but I want to draw your attention to a couple things across the top. Um, across the top, you'll see on, on almost every Acumatic screen the ability to do a number of things. One, obviously, we can always be uh, tracking notes that are uh, specific to this particular document, um, as you might expect. Nothing really earth shattering there. Um, but here's where some of the workflow components in Acumatic really begin to uh, take shape. Um, I have the ability to attach files to, and I look like I picked a document type that let's get out of this document type that uh, is a little, needs a little more configuration than I have on my test database. Let's uh, work through this one. Um, I have the ability to actually automate workflow in my organization by keeping uh, tasks and events and activities that are relevant for whether I'm talking about an AP bill or a purchase order or a vendor master file. And I can do things like, um, assign or track specific information for specific documents. So in the case of an AP bill, I might have, uh, you know, 
I might want to uh, send this to someone in my purchasing department. Please review quantities on this invoice based on contract, right? And I can send this to a particular work group, right? Or I can send this to a particular person. So my, my guy in purchasing is, um, is Michael. So, and I can send him a, a, a notice to the low that this is high priority and that I need this um, at a certain particular time, right? Uh, so this is, you know, remind Michael by Monday at eight o'clock that we actually need this to happen. And if you remember back to that dashboard, um, this is one of those components in that to-do list that shows up on someone's to-do list when there's something for them that's pending for them to do. And you can see now that we've actually tracked this as an activity to this bill. So whether or not we're working on um, an AP bill, a purchase order, a sales order, a contract with a, with a, with a subcontractor, with, with some subcontractor, we have the ability to make sure that nothing falls between the, tr the cracks from a communication perspective and from an assignment and responsibility perspective by using uh, these activities that we have across the system. Um, the other thing that we can do is we can actually attach any documents that we might need that are relevant for, um, for um, uh, any, any of the data items that we need. So in this particular case, I might want to actually attach a contract uh, or an invoice or, or PO associated with this particular document. So I'll go ahead and upload that uh, to Acumatica. And you'll see now that there's actually a file right here um, associated with this document. If I want to see that, we're actually storing that file right in Acumatica. Um, we can see that document and have it available to us, um, saving lots of trees and um, file cabinet storage space. Um, so we'll go ahead and take this off a of hold, and I'm going to leave this here because we'll come back and talk about kind of how we process through transactions a little bit more. Um, the last thing I'm going to talk about from a workflow perspective is this co the concept of business events. And what business events allow us to do is monitor anything that happens on um, um, a particular screen, whether it be a master file screen or a transaction screen, and we have the ability to um, take action when something happens. So the example that I like to use is a new, a new invoice is being entered for a bill. We don't have a, a formal approval process for that kind of bill, but I want someone to know that this, that this new bill is coming uh, uh, in and, and I might want to um, draw attention to a particular charge on it based on maybe a jail account code that, that I've uh, coded a line item to or, or an item ID. And so what this allows me to do is set any set of conditions that I want to trigger this particular event. So anything on this screen, whether it's a dollar amount, whether it's a vendor, whether it's a GL account, can be used as a trigger. And then I can create a subscriber who's going to get this notification. And then further, how are they going to get this notification? Are they going to get it by email? Are they going to get it by a push notification onto their mobile application in, Ac in Acumatica? Or are they going to get a text message, right? So this allows me to automate the process of, sh of sharing important information regardless of what um you know what it is i need to track um and make sure that this information gets in the hands of the of the right people okay all right i'm gonna pivot and we'll take a, an example here kind of start to finish and we're going to stay in the ap world um and we'll do an example of maybe um starting you know, look how to use this visual here um we'll kind of start um with uh, an ap bill that comes through um, we'll take it from maybe even for a purchase order uh, level uh, to receiving the goods to um, processing the bill that comes from, from that. So I'm going to jump over to purchasing. And this is uh, one of the modules in our distribution suite. Um, and we'll take a look at a purchase order that we've got pending right now. So um, we've got uh, a situation where we're going to be ordering some materials. In this case, I'm going to keep it very simple. I'm going to order some widgets and some services related to that, maybe some installation services related to that particular, those widgets that I need uh, on one PO for one vendor. Um, I've placed this PO, but notice right now the status on this PO is actually pending approval. Uh, and that gives me an opportunity to talk about uh, approvals and assignments in Acumatica. Uh, so in Acumatica, we actually have the ability to define approval maps and assign them um, to, to any of the core business functions uh, in, in the system. So in this case, I've defined a purchase order two-step approval map that basically says um, all purchase orders need to get approved by our finance team, but large purchase orders, and that large being the total is greater than $5,000, actually need to get us approved um, by Michael Andrews who's on our executive team or our administrative executive team, okay? So very simple approval. I can make this as, as complex as I want. I could, as many rules as I want to throw at this approval process, I could do. But if I look here, I'll see 
that this actually is going to be waiting uh, for approval. So what would have happened when I take when I took this off a hold? Laura would have received Layla. I'm sorry, would have received a, a notification saying, "Hey, uh, you need to take a look at this uh, bridge loader and approve it." Uh, for um, efficiency sake, I'm going to go ahead and automate that approval for Laura because I want to get through this example. But notice then that this becomes an approved purchase order. And now I have the actual ability to actually place this purchase order with my vendor. So I might want to go ahead and email this purchase order to the vendor. And so this is going to use Acumatica's built-in email processing to handle this process. And you'll see now that the fact that I sent that email leaves a, an audit trail for me. I can see the email that I sent to the vendor. Uh, and so uh, this is a typical notification type template in Acumatica. Uh, this is all up to you. You decide what you want this verbiage to be, and then Acumatica will actually then attach the PDF of the purchase order, the contract that we have with our vendor, and that goes as a PDF along with the, e with the email. Okay? Alrighty. So that's all great, fine and dandy. Um, that email goes out. We're going to kind of, uh, a couple days goes by, we actually start receiving um, the goods in. And so uh, that next step would be to actually go ahead and generate uh, a a purchase order receipt and so we we might be looking at kind of the first level of matching on our um ap bill to um on, uh, excuse me on our on our packing slip that we received in uh on the goods that are coming in and, and relative to um the, the purchaser that we place so i'm going to actually go ahead and add the po in that i know that i'm receiving from so we're going to do that we'll add that po in and it should have just the equipment that we decided to purchase on it. So this gives me the ability to, um, you know, validate the quantities. If I wanted to drag and drop, um, you know, a packing slip on here, I could very easily kind of drag and drop the packing slip on here so that I can always keep all of the relevant documentation with this particular doc, uh, document in Acumatica. And when I'm happy with this, I'll go ahead and release it. Okay. So uh, we've kind of done one part of that match. We've, we've matched what we've actually received physically to the actual um, packing slip that came in uh, and against the PO that we ordered from a quantity perspective. Um, down the line, we're actually going to receive a bill for this. And so for that example, I'm going to move over to Outlook. Let's say um, many times uh, we're, you know, these days we're receiving things like invoices uh, via email. And so um, I use that as an opportunity to talk about some of the other integrations that we do with some of the other common business tools. So I'm going to use Outlook as an example. So I've got an email that came in from my vendor. Um, for that particular uh, product and service. And notice here in Outlook, I've actually got an Outlook plugin here and, and, uh, for Acumatica that will actually um, take a look at what it sees in this email and start recommending things that I might want to do with it. Some of the things I might want to do, I might want to create an AP document out of it because it sees it as an invoice. I might want to create a lead or a contact if I'm using Acumatica CRM. I might want to create a request for information or a project issue if I was using the construction module and I need, and this was the email relevant for um, something that happened out on the job site. Okay, so um, one of the things that we like to do is we leverage the power of, of connectedness in the cloud world that allows us to um, really uh, do um, efficiencies for our user base around the, 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 the tools that they're using. So in this case, Outlook um, and, and the commonplace where folks uh, spend a fair amount part of their day. So I'm going to tell it to go ahead and create an AP document. And what, it, what that's going to do is it's actually submitting this invoice out to um, a machine learning artificial intelligence service. And it's actually doing document recognition to see how much of this invoice is actually able to code for us. Um, so I'm going to let it do that, that, uh, that piece there. But on the back end, what's happening is uh, in my incoming documents queue in, that, in accounts payable, I've actually got a number of documents that are either in process of being recognized. So this is the one that we just saw come through Outlook. Um, or um, maybe this one was emailed directly to AP at nextechgroup.com or um, the, the, the address that I've given my uh, suppliers to send invoices to. And Acumatica knows how to watch that invoice box, that email box, and then process invoices that come through. So we'll just take a look at this one since that one's already, already through as, as I can show you this example. And so what Acumatica is going to do is going to try to figure out exactly how much of this invoice it can, it can um, grab based on the, the, uh, what it sees in the document. So you can see here, it got the invoice total, it got the invoice number, it got it from here, it got the invoice date. It doesn't know the vendor, so I'm going to go ahead and put the vendor in. This is uh, this goes to our go-to vendor. So we'll do that. And I can then just go ahead and save that. And what Acumatica is going to do there is actually create the AP document. So this is the bill 
that we need to process and Acumatic can actually go and pay that 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 vendor right and if i wanted to if i wanted to reference this back to po's and receipts i could actually pull those lines in at po receipts and do a validation against the lines that i see on this invoice to complete that match from a three-way match perspective um, to complete my payment process so we'll go ahead and release that and then the next step would be often to pay that particular bill so um, what i wanted to illustrate there is we talked about, about a number of different things we talked about the ability to um, to uh, manage attachments and manage emails and communication with both internal parties and our vendors or our external parties. We talked about being able to leverage the power of, of the connectedness of Acumatica from a, um, you know, it, we looked at the Outlook plugin and, 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 and we see how Acumatica is uh, making it easy for us to um, automate our business processes starting from various uh, start points, whether it's Outlook or actually in the application. And then finally, we talked a little bit about artificial intelligence and machine learning. Um, and, th and that's something that Acumatic has, has been doing a lot of uh, investment from a, from a uh, R&D perspective in. And, and you know, being able to um, look at an expense receipt as being, uh, when you take a picture of it and kind of uh, figure out if it's a dinner receipt or a travel expense, um, and then coding it properly through our expense reimbursement process, or in this case, document uh, management and recognition of an invoice from a vendor. Okay, alrighty. I'm um, gonna pivot there, and we'll start. We'll take. We'll just do another quick example uh, from a sales order perspective, um, and we'll just uh, walk you through um, a sales order and um, and a shipping process. I think this will be our first chance to actually take a look at the mobile application as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start a sales order here. And in my sales order, uh, I actually uh, I'm just going to take one of the ones that I worked with earlier today, um, just for speed's sake. I'm going to copy a sales order that I already have in the system, and I'm just going to paste it into a new sales order here, um, and give myself a little bit more room here work with so we we'll like this so all we're doing here is we're buying um, uh, some computers from uh, or some sorry some uh, one of our customers this Alta Ace customer is buying some computers for us that's one of the things we sell um, so that's fine uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, I'm going to ship this out to them so I'm going to figure out the best way to ship this to them so uh, uh, kind of along the the uh, theme of being able to talk to other services out there very easily I've got the ability to actually go out and talk to um, shipping services, whether it's FedEx, USPS, or UPS, and get the best pricing. Uh, FedEx is a little bit cheaper, but UPS is going to get it there in four days, so I'm going to pick UPS. We're going to pack it out in a medium box, so that's kind of an estimate of what the weight's going to be, and so that's great. And so uh, then I'm also going to take a payment for this. Um, uh, I take credit card payments, so I'm going to use Acumatic as a built-in credit card processing to take a credit card payment or at least take an authorization on this so that I can authorize this. So I've actually got um, a credit card on file for this particular customer that's stored, and I'm just storing a token of this on, on in Acumatica. Um, but if I wanted to, I could specify I'm gonna enter a new card and enter a new card information right here. But I'm just gonna go ahead and do an authorization here. Okay. Looks like that happened okay. I've got an authorized uh, transaction here. And so the next thing I'm gonna do uh, is load up my mobile application. So give me one sec, I'm gonna pivot a bit here and get the utility that I use for sharing my iPhone loaded up. Let's see if that worked. In the meantime, while that's doing that, the next step from an Acumatic perspective would be that I would actually go create a shipment for this particular document. This is akin to sending this down to the warehouse of picking and packing. So this is an example of what that might look like um, from, a, from a shipment perspective saying, we need you to go pick two of these guys from warehouse location, R1, S1 in our wholesale warehouse. I might want to go ahead and have a pick ticket printed for that. So this is kind of an example of what that pick ticket might look like. and um, Maybe I might want to even use Acumatica from a warehouse management perspective to, to pick and pack this particular transaction. So I'm going to move my packing slip over here. I'm going to minimize a couple of things that I have just to give us more screen real estate here. And I'm going to put 
my mobile app kind of front and center. Let's see how big I can make this mobile app here. I think that's as big as I can make it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna log into Acumatica. Since I'm on the iPhone, I'll just use my, my face ID. And um, this is really the first time I've had a chance to talk about the mobile application, but this mobile application is an iOS app. It's, 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 an, it's both iOS and Android. You can find it in the Apple iOS store or the Android store. And what we do here is it's really exposing uh, key screens that users might want to use from a mobile perspective. Um, and, it, and it exposes them in a way that it makes them friendly for the format of your phone, right? So it makes them touch friendly. Um, so things like be, uh, filling out expense reports, or we talked about the approval process, right? Or being able to manage um, time cards or, or expense management. I can actually drill into my sales order screen if I want to, or all of those various dashboards that we talked about before will also render uh, very nicely onto, um, onto the mobile app here, right? So very nifty tool. And what's great about this is we don't have to do any programming to make this happen. Any screen in Acumatica actually has the ability to be rendered uh, onto um, this particular um, mobile app. So I'm gonna actually use this to do a pick, pack, ship process. And I'm not even gonna do the full pick, pack, ship process, but we'll just kind of uh, show you the idea. So I might be scanning uh, kind of the, the shipment document that um, I uh, want to be picking from. And then uh, I might go out to the particular warehouse location and scan the area of the barcode there uh, of the location. And then I might actually then go and scan the barcode item that I'm picking. And then uh, easy enough, I've actually got the ability to kind of review uh, my picks here. So if I've actually picked um, both of these computers. Well, I've actually just picked one. So I'm gonna go find the other one. Uh, so we'll go back and we'll, um, enter the new location where we're getting the second one from, you get it from the same place. And we'll go ahead and we'll scan the barcode again, of that item, and we'll try it again. Let's, let's scan that one. And we'll go ahead and now we'll confirm this shipment. Okay, um, so uh, very quickly able to process that particular um, shipment using my handheld. Um, and now if I come back into Acumatica, we should see immediately if I look at that shipment that it is actually confirmed. Okay. Um, looks like I hit the refresh button too many times. Let's go ahead and refresh itself. There it is. So that's the confirmed shipment that we just did. If I look, go look at the packaging, I'll see that um, because I confirmed the shipment, Acumatica went on ahead and made that call out to UPS. It actually went out and generated my... UPS ground label that goes out to my thermal printer, and I can actually then go ahead and finish this up by just preparing the invoice for this particular transaction. So um, what I wanted to, again, just illustrate there just from a usability perspective, the ability for us to kind of just leverage core things in Acumatica, um, you know, the ability to, to, um, to integrate with services like our credit card processing uh, gateway um, or our um, UPS or FedEx shipping uh, gateways, to really make um, a lot of these processes that, that our customers do seamless. Um, last thing I might do is actually go ahead and email this invoice off to the customer. So I'm gonna, um, actually this payment needs, uh, forget about that, this particular payment right here uh, would then need to actually be captured. So we'll uh, see if we can capture this payment. And then that would be the last. We'll actually capture the credit card payment here. We'll uh, get our money in our merchant bank account and that'll actually wrap up this process gives me ability at that point to then go ahead and release that invoice. All righty. So last thing we're gonna do is we'll spend a little bit of time uh, just talking about some of the other modules that we, um, and additions that we have in Acumatica. Um, so um, three major additions that, I will, that I'll highlight here. The first is, uh, is our manufacturing edition. And um, this, it, for, um, this is a, uh, a core edition in Acumatica, it builds on top of our distribution edition, gives us the ability to manage um, any number of different manufacturing uh, modes, whether we're talking um, discrete, uh, make to order, engineer to order, um, some process manufacturing, um, and gives us the ability to kind of define um, material, a, a bomb, define routing, def define work centers, um, and then issue production orders against that. Um, a full MRP module that allows us to actually go through and, 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 and manage the flow of materials that we need and the flow of orders that we need in, in, the, in, the, um, in, the, in the operation. 
and also um, do some forecasting and, and, uh, and finite capacity planning. So that's our build, that's our manufacturing module. Um, one of the other things that I think is really um, uh, unique and, and, and really sets Acumatico apart um, in the mid-market space for ERP is um, its project costing functionality. And so the ability to um, actually um, do full project or job costing um, is, is a very strong feature set in Acumatica. Um, and the illustrate that a lot of times I like to drill down to actually the journal transaction screen. And we can see that when we're coding transactions in Acumatica, there are a number of different dimensions that we actually code against, right? So we might be coding against an account, a sub account, and the sub account can be divided into a number of different segments. So this is a 30 digit field, and it can be divided into as many segments as I need to within that 30 character uh, length. And then you can see that there are actually three other dimensions here that are here for us if we're using project accounting. A project number, a project task, or a sub job, uh, field and then a cost code field. So the strength of this allows us to be very specific. If, we, if we're tracking specific uh, profitability at a particular job level or profit or a project level, um, the fact that every transaction in Acumatica, whether it's a timesheet or an expense report, a sales order that creates an inventory issue or an invoice or a purchase order um, uh, or a contract with a vendor that creates a receipt or an AP bill, all of those transactions ultimately leave journal entries, and each journal entry can be coded to those three dimensions. So that gives us extreme flexibility and power for being able to manage um, what happens, either whether we're talking a construction project or we're talking a services project. Uh, a lot of clients in the oil and gas industry, so the ability to kind of manage um, crews and, um, and um, equipment uh, on, a, on a work breakdown structure uh, is extremely um, easy to do in Acumatica. And so I'm just kind of highlighting a couple of things from a construction addition perspective. The construction addition is actually built on top of the project of, uh, management functionality in Acumatica. Um, so the ability to actually do, uh, you know, to manage subcontracts, to manage um, retention, to manage work crews, union pay, um, is all really just kind of a, a built into our uh, the, the, the core functionality uh, in the addition. Uh, and then from a project management perspective, and we've looked at this a little bit, but the ability to, to track project issues, the RFIs, drawings, daily field reports, and so forth, submittals, um, just kind of all baked in into the uh, application. Um, and then the last edition that I'm going to talk about is our field services edition. And so from a field services perspective, and let me see if I have an illustration here. I do have a kind of a brief field services flow here. Um, essentially, um, gives us the ability to manage service orders and from service orders, we can derive multiple appointments where we need to assign crews and we need to assign equipment out to a site to perform installation, service, warranty work. Um, our equipment maintenance functional, function allows us to track all of the details that are relevant for a piece of equipment. So we can be tracking the multiple components that are um, tracked inside of a piece of equipment. Uh, just a quick example, you know, we've got, we sell air conditioners. These air, air conditioners we sold to various customers. We know where they are. We have purchase information about when they were purchased, when they were put in service, all of the various components. So that air conditioner is made up of compressors and fans and evaporators. What warranty information we have there? Have we had to replace this yet? Who is the vendor is for replacing that particular uh, piece of equipment? So all of that is tracked uh, in our equipment maintenance man uh, module. And then when it's time to actually schedule events to happen out there, very easy for us then to go out and jump into a calendar board and dispatch out um, our techs based on the types of jobs that require uh, service. And we can be filtering those jobs by the types of skills or licenses or the types of problems that we need to solve. And so based on that, that's gonna filter out which reps we could actually assign this to. And then we can just drag and drop those things out to the users to get them scheduled out. Okay, and then the last piece of that is from a field management perspective, um, back on the mobile, um, if I could actually then be um, processing those particular um, appointments based on um, being able to actually real time communicate from my tablet, and it looks like uh, my iPhone's gone dead. I mean, I'm going to skip that part um, to actually execute what's happening in the field um, for a particular service order. All right, so that's our tour, our, our 40 minute uh, whirlwind tour of Acumatica. Uh, Janine, do you want to? Uh, Take us to the, the, the wrap up. Get it to change. All right, so um, just a couple more slides here um, to talk a little bit about the Acumatica promotion that's being offered. So it's a GP to Acumatica migration offer, uh, one free year plus an additional three year, 3% 3 price lock. 
So the discount is spread over the initial 30 month, 36 month period. It ends up being about 33%. And then that 3% discount is added on for the additional 36 month period. So um, it is valid until December 31, 2020. So, um, and that's just locking in and signing up for, um, for the new solution. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me and I'll be glad to, to talk about it more. Uh, just a couple more additional resources and then we'll take questions. So there's an Acumatica product tour out on our website at nexttechgroup.com slash Acumatica. And then there are uh, Acumatica user groups as well if you wanna check those out at acumaticausergroup.com. All right, so um, Brian, I think I'm, am I handing this back over to you? to see if we've got any questions. Sure. Okay, uh, thank you, Janine. Thank you, Lawrence. And thank you, everyone, um, on today's uh, webcast. At this time, if you do have any questions, uh, please type those in the question panel below. Um, looks like we have uh, a few questions already in the queue, so let's go ahead and uh, read those off. Uh, first question I see, does Acumatica have an integrated payroll system? Wants to take hey, this is one. Chuck Oliver. Yeah, I'll answer that. Uh, yeah, sure. Acumatica does have an integrated payroll system. Um, um, it's, uh, it's, it's regular payroll for North America and it also does certified payroll for the construction industry. And okay. it's fully integrated into this. Great. Uh, next question I see, will we, need, will we still need binary stream to handle intercompany processing? All right, this is Chuck again. Um, no, you will not. Um, Acumatica has full uh, multi-company and multi-currency uh, integration to do to do from processes between it's automated uh, within the application so you will not need an add-on like binary stream to facilitate that okay uh, next question are there any tools to help with data conversion uh, if we're moving from GP to Acumatica Great question. So yeah, there is actually a, a tool that Acumatica has specifically for Dynamics GP um, users to, to migrate uh, data from Dynamics GP to Acumatica, which really streamlines uh, the conversion process um, from both the time and a cost perspective. Um, it focuses on the master records, whether it be your, your chart of accounts, uh, items, vendors, customers, employees, things like that. Uh, and there's also some tools to help with some of the some uh, some of the detailed data. Okay. Uh, next question: uh, How long does a typical migration um, from GP to Acumatica take? Uh, it really depends upon the size of the uh, of the system that we're going to and the modules that you're that you're utilizing. We've done it in you know less than 45 days. Uh, and then it might take as much as 90 days or so. It's, it's, it's a new implementation, so it depends on if we're doing some true business process review or if you're just moving what you have onto a more uh, a current system. Okay. Um, next question I see, can Acumatica link inventory like GP can, linking the cost of an item to a sales order? Yeah, absolutely. Well, that looks like all the questions we have today. So uh, let's go ahead and wrap up. Again, thank you everyone for attending today. So if you do have any additional questions that come up or uh, would like to possibly set up a more in-depth uh, demonstration of Acumatic for your team, feel free to reply to that email and we'd be happy to assist. Uh, with that being said, everyone stay safe and have a great day.